AMC laden with debt and suffering from current theater closures is showing its concerns about Universal bringing in some $77 million in revenue from its digital release of its film Trolls World Tour. AMC saying that his ban of movies that are also offered on demand during the theatrical window, quote, extends to any movie maker who unilaterally abandons current windowing practices absent good faith negotiations between us so that they as a distributor and we as an exhibitor both benefit and neither are hurt from such changes. So Larry sent me this story and boy, got to be more careful. It's a good one. <laughs> we kind of talked about this um, on some other, older podcasts when we mentioned that because of what's going on with the Rona and the streaming right now, that it might give studios an opportunity to see what it would be like not to have to deal with the middleman, which is the movie theater. Well, right. guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's what happened with Universal's when they dropped this movie right here, Trolls. They yep. dropped Trolls, video on demand. You rent the a movie for $20. And they had 5 million people rent Trolls at $20 a pop. They made $100 million, And the president of AMC comes out hot. Hot. Mad. He wants yeah, some I of that money. He feels like they breached the agreement. And when we first talked about this, Larry T streams, I asked y'all, did y'all know that the government had a little agreement amongst car manufacturers in which they had to sell to car dealerships? And I was wondering what's the same thing in place for movie theaters. Mm -hmm. App apparently it is, but it ain't. T streams, I'm gonna give it to you first. Bruh, are we not visionaries on this channel? We said they was gonna do this. We said it. Say, <laughs> say man, it, it's gotta be some trendsetters out there, man. I, I, I tell you what, this right here is going to set the precedence for a lot of other stuff. Now, not quite really sure what type of, uh, what type, the, on, the only way I think that the AMC can even uh, contend this is if, if they have uh, if they had any inkling of a clue that their agreement with them has been broken. Now, you do, you, there is some type of agreement that, that has to be set out with, with movie theaters. And that's why when you, when you see the movie trailers, they'll say that uh, it's, this movie will be out in 3,200 uh, theaters or it'll be in out west on this day and then across the world on this day so they do have certain things put in place now whether or not uh they violated that i don't know now a billion dollars is a lot that is a lot of money and i know somebody was probably sitting back a hundred million yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say, a billion? A billion. Okay. No. Boy, if they would have made a billion, they would have told AMC, I don't care if you kick rocks, kiss rocks, have sex yeah. with rocks, throw rocks. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. So so somebody was sitting there trying to see who was going to be the, uh, who's going to who's going to be the, the, the forerunner to see if this concept will work. And uh, apparently, you know, they did it with a uh, cartoon, you know, so... Mm -hmm. So that that's going to open up the doors for some. Uh, that's going to be open up the doors for some some other people that to try it. You know, I still hope that they. You know, we keep hearing more and more that AMC is getting ready to file bankruptcy. That they're mm -hmm. falling behind and under. Right. And you know that's that's understandable, and that may have even been motive for that push. But I do hope, you know, if they do offer that, I still hope that they don't take away the whole movie going experience. You know, as some people just like to get up and get out the house and go to the movies. But man, that's that's really that's really impressive. So, you know, what's going to happen if they decide to really cut loose a blockbuster? They will. Somebody's yeah. going to test that water. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and it might be and it might be universal if AMC is trying to play hardball like that. It might be universal that decides that they're going to test that water and say, right. let's go ahead and put out a $200 million blockbuster film and mm -hmm. see what it can do. You but know, Larry, it, don't, uh, Larry, don't you think in this situation, AMC needs the movie studio more than that movie studio needs AMC? Absolutely. I, I, I want to say yes, but at the same time, sort of no, 
Okay. Because there still is that whole thing of having the movie going experience. However, well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking purely from a financial standpoint. I get that people are going to want to go out. But if people could get a blockbuster, and neither one of y'all have been in my living room, so y'all don't know my setup, but a lot of people would rather sit in my living room with the setup I got if I order pizza and pay for it than to go right. to the movie theater. From a financial standpoint, do you do you think um, the movie studios have the advantage over the movie Comp the the uh, movie outlets and theaters. Now, Regal just today telling Variety it will also boycott Universal Films. We have reached out to Regal for comment on this. Now, Universal saying in response to AMC that it wants to reach the widest potential audience, quote, going forward, we expect to release films directly to theaters as well as on PVOD paid video on demand when that distribution outlet makes sense. Now, the effective deadline for Universal and the theaters to reach a deal is September because that's when Universal is doing its next wide release. I mean, it's hard to say. And the reason why I say that is, is because when the way that the current business model is mm -hmm. with the theaters is that when people, and like they would have to change the streaming model to sort of match that. Cause right now, the way it is with their business model, you, if you want to see the latest releases, you have to actually go to the theaters and they're only in the theaters for a limited period of time. So people rush to get there to see that movie within a particular time frame. Sometimes it's there for a week two weeks a month whatever usually it's not most movies aren't there for more than a month so usually within that 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 one to three week period people are rushing to see that movie the only way that i can imagine that they would be able to get sort of the returns that they get with theaters at home is if they did that same thing where they said okay here's the new movie we're gonna release it and it's, you know, you can rent it uh, at home for streaming for the first three weeks. And then after that, they pull it and leave it and leave it gone for a while before they do a full streaming release to, to DVD or to, to Netflix or whatever, because there needs to be that sort of artificial scarcity that, that the movie theaters provide mm -hmm. in order to really make all that money. So you know? basically what you're saying is, in essence, they can make money twice because you can have it at the theater in limited showing, limited time, whatever. And then you can, after it's done in the theater, if you want, you can still do the video on demand service if you want to do it. Right. But I don't know what the agreement is between theaters and the studios. But apparently, if the agreement ain't what they want, I still feel like this was nothing but a beta test to be like, you know what? We don't like the agreement with the movie company, or they might be doing this to request more out of the movie company. <clears throat> this could be a method to say, we have intrinsic value, meaning that we really don't need y'all. And if y'all want our movies, you're gonna have to give us more revenue from what we've been charging for those movies. Well, that's the thing though. They they don't make the way, the part of the reason why the theater system is the way it is now is because they had antitrust lawsuits uh, back in the day because the, the, the studios, used to own the actual theaters. And so there were issues before with where theater, where independent theater owners were saying, hey, we can't get the movies because the theater the studios won't give them to us because they own their own studios and they own their own theaters. So they're controlling everything. And there were some antitrust issues. So the, so the courts came in and broke it up and said that, I believe it was that the studios could not own the theaters as well. Okay. So they could do so, one or the right. other. And mm -hmm. since so, the money was on making the movies and not showing the movies, they went with the the with the, with the production side. So, you know, but you're right. If it ends up where they basically just say, we don't really even care about sending our stuff to the theater. And, and here's, and here's something that I, that, that here's a, an example. And I don't know how, I don't know how, what you guys did with this when you were younger, but mm -hmm. if you, I remember as a kid that we used to go the drive-in way mm -hmm. more often than we went to the individual theater. And part of that was because you can go to the drive-in and pay per car and not per person. So if we used to go, like there was a place called the Fox Theater downtown where I was at, and it was like 275 a person, but we could go to the drive-in and it was like $10 for the whole car. So, mm -hmm. you know, we would pack five, five, six kids in there and we'd go to the movies. 
Plus you mean to tell me so, they ain't have no rules against some no kind of an 18 van? They have no rules again. Man, you could literally come up there with a semi truck and it could be packed with people trying to cross the border. Right. And you yeah. mean to tell me you only paid for just that truck? That's it. And here's the other crazy thing about it was often we didn't even bother to go get concessions because you're in a car. Bring we used to pack you. an ice chest with, with, with drinks and we my mom would cook for us. And if there were, and if we went in the summertime when it was warm and there were, and there was too many people in the car, we used to bring our lawn chairs. You would just pop the lawn chair out and sit it next to the car. Or sometimes you would just sit on the hood of the car. So, I mean, the driving experience was something that people thought was never going to go away. And it went away. And people said, no one's ever going to go to the movie theaters like that. No one's going to go to the movie theaters like they do. But then they did. Well, what's happening now is you're starting to see the same thing happen again. Well, people are like, well, I don't need to go to the movie theaters. I can watch in my house. I can sit <laughs> on my couch and when I have to go to the bathroom, I can hit pause. When I want to get up and go and, 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 and grab something out of the refrigerator, I can hit pause. If I miss what that person said, I can hit rewind. There's a lot of, there's a lot of advantages to watching at home. And as people have better, like you were saying, I don't know what your setup is at home, but when you have a 70 inch or 80 inch TV and a surround sound system, a lot of people are like, this is good enough. Yeah. Not only is it good enough, it's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man, you better believe it. And I got the reclining theater chair. You can lounge back and it, it can contort you and massage you and it can do, and it's got plugs, bruh. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I don't like getting out the house, I won't. 